Now this rather simple programming will make this circuit work, but we're actually going to um, we're actually going to use something else. So I'm going to get rid of this entirely to start over, which is also what I would suggest that you do. We want to do variables. In, we don't necessarily need it for this circuit, but by doing using a variable to program this circuit, we'll understand how variables work so that we can use them uh, more effectively in the future. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to figure out if the button is pressed or not. So we are going to go back to control. We are going to grab our if then else statement yet again. And it's just good practice putting this together because you're going to be doing this a lot. I'm going to put a math block in and I'm going to switch it to equals to. I'm going to grab an input. I'm going to have it again read digital pin 2 and see if it is equal to high. And then here's where we're going to get into variables. Variable is a placeholder. Variable is some place where we can put a number in order to use it later on. And again, this simple of a circuit, we don't necessarily need it, but as your activity continues and you start to make this circuit more complicated, variables are the key to making your more complicated circuits work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a variable and I'm going to name it button. Okay. And as you can see, I now have the ability to set it to a number or change it to a number. So if we read it as high, I'm going to set the variable button to 1. If it is not high, meaning the button's not being pressed, I want to set button to 0. So that's already set. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a second loop here, if then else loop. So I'm going to grab it again. And again, I know this is more complicated than it needs to be for this circuit, but future circuits are going to need this level of complexity. I'm then going to grab I'm again going to grab my math block. And this time what I'm going to say is if button is equal to 1, then set pin 13 to high, and else, or if it's not equal to that, I can set pin 13 to low. Now, in all actuality, this should work just fine. I'm going to show you a slightly, because if I, again, if I start the simulation, it should start. And if I push the button, it holds. And if I let go of the button, it turns off. Exactly what I wanted, this time using a variable. I want to show you a little bit of what I like to call branching. So in this case, I'm going to use just two if-thens. I'm going to actually grab this whole setup and bring it here. And I'm going to move what's true into that as well. Now what I'm going to do is if I right click on this, I can duplicate that setup and I can put it here. Now I'm going to make a change. Instead of saying equal to zero, I'm going to just change from equal to not equal. And I'm going to set pin 13 to low. So again, if then else kind of takes the place of this, but there are some times where branching is nice. Okay. This is, should be the end result of your circuit. So in my assignment, this is the image I'm going to be looking to see. Is it looks something like this. When I start my simulation, it'll initialize. If the button is pressed, the LED is lit. If the button is not pressed, the LED is not lit. And that's how you can, you, you can use block coding and variables to start to control things as your circuits get more complicated.